Dan Bedondi, Infowars.com at the Rhode Island Ferry Festival. And it is August of 2015, and the presidential races are heating up already. So we're going to ask Rhode Islanders who their choice is for president for 2016, and also ask parents if they're concerned about the new law that mandates all children to be vaccinated prior to entering school this year. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Enjoying the Fairy Festival? Oh, I'm so excited. There's one here. <laughs> Now, in 2016, your pick for U.S. president, uh, Hillary, Jeb Bush, Donald Trump, or somebody else? Uh, Hillary Clinton, all the way. I'm looking at Joe Biden. I hear that he's th thinking of uh, throwing his hat in the ring. Probably Hillary. Well, I'm a Republican, so I'd have to go with someone on the Republican bill. Like Jeb Bush or Donald Trump? Yeah. Not Donald Trump, so let's go Jeb. Yep. Okay. Somebody else. Uh, Marco Rubio. I would say Hillary, but I'm looking for someone to come up. And uh, what has Hillary Clinton done for this country to make you want to vote for her? Um, well, uh, I thought she was fantastic Secretary of State, and probably one of my favorite things that her and Chelsea do as a fairy <laughs> is their things for the animal activist, for the elephant and the ivory trade and things like that. But um, for more a political um, way, I think she'll help get um, fair pay for women and uh, hopefully bump up the minimum wage. Well, she has a lot of experience being, you know, the Secretary of State and being, I'm also from New York, so I have a little uh, preference for that. But um, I like her, I, I just like her honesty, I think. Um, I think she's done a lot for women, just in general, just to make a, a women move forward. What has um, Marcus Rubio done for this country to make you want to vote for him? Um, he's um, he comes from a Cuban immigrant family, and I like his his story, his family story, and he served well in the in the U.S. Senate. What has Joe Biden done for this country to make you want to vote for him? Um, like I said, I think his foreign policy has been um, the. He's been um, very out front on foreign aid, which I think is important, and also is really sensitive about um, overseas issues. And also health care reform. He's been very supportive. I'm very, um, in, very much in favor of everything that the Obama administration has done for health care reform. And uh, what do you think Jeb Bush has done for this country to make you want to consider him? I have to do a lot more research. It's, it's all early in the game. What has any of these people that I mentioned done for this country to make people want to vote for them? Um, Hillary, Jeb, and Donald Trump. Um, Hillary... Um, you know what? I think she kind of rides on the Clinton name. I mean, I thought her husband was a good president. That's my opinion. Um, Jeb Bush, again, he's going on the name. Um, he gets a lot of visibility because of his name, even though he just puts Jeb up on his uh, campaign signs. And, and <laughs> sorry, Donald Trump's just a joke. I mean, I can't even come up with anything serious about him. All right, and uh, do you believe that Obama and his administration lived up to the hype in his last two elections, and why? Absolutely not. You know, he was, he's a disappointment, a real disappointment. Um, I think the president has done a great job um, under extenuating circumstances. He inherited a lot of big problems, and I think he'll be judged very well by history for what he's done to bring the economy back and also um, to reform our health care system, expand um, health insurance. I think they did a lot. I think you can only, you know, do so much depending on what the Congress is at the time. But I, I think he's tried. No. Why is that? You know, what happened to hope? He talked about hope in his elections and he hasn't used the word hope since. I don't think any candidate ever lives up to the hype. Um, I think when we look back on it in history, they will have. They've done a lot. I think there's a lot of negativity that's clouding people's judgment about them. But um, I think they've done a lot for the economy. I know it, people might not feel like it, but compared to where we were, I think they've done a lot. So for the most part, yes. What main problems do you think our next president should focus on? Well, I'd say ISIS is a pretty big deal right now. Um, I'd want to say that's the number one concern, but as an animal activist, I think the hunting and the poaching, we had the lion Cecil die recently, and that was horrible. And I think that should be up there with some of the more important war issues that they deal with. I think animal conservation and protection is just as important. They're spirits. Um, I think we need to continue to um, focus on um, health care reform. I think we have a huge income gap. I think our education system needs a lot of improvement right now. Uh, we have to talk about the economy. We have to talk about education. 
Uh, we have to talk about saving our own resources. Concentrate more on our country rather than oh, the Middle East, um, Israel, you know, outside issues. I think we have enough issues in our own country. Um, immigration is a big one. I think that should be a focus. And, um, our, and terrorism. Now, recently, U.S. Senator Sheldon Whitehouse from Rhode Island here, he stated that anybody that denies climate change should be arrested. Now, do you agree or disagree with that? I don't know about if they should be arrested, but it, if, I mean, it's definitely happening. <laughs> I think that people that deny climate change are probably living in their own fairy tale. <laughs> but arrested is a little harsh. Um, maybe just they should take a look at reality. Well, that might be a little bit extreme. I, th I believe in free speech and freedom of opinion, but I think that the evidence is absolutely ironclad that climate change is real and we've got to do something about it. I think that's ridiculous. I mean, it's so obvious. All scientists have uh, proven that, so I, I can't even <laughs> imagine why anyone would say that. Disagree. Not, not arrested, um, but I think they're very um, misinformed if they don't believe that there is climate change. I disagree. Everyone should have their own opinion about everything. Be arrested, that's a little extreme. And, uh, do you believe there should be a mandatory carbon tax to cl combat climate change? I think there are enough taxes, but I would say that that would probably be one of the more important taxes. You know, we live in this earth and we already buy water. It would certainly suck if we had to buy fresh air too. I don't know enough about it to say if there should be or shouldn't be at this point. Yes. Yes, I think um, the big factories and companies, they should be responsible for that, yeah. No. No. No, no more taxes, please, no more taxes. No, I don't. Now, the Rhode Island Department of Health just mandated that all students must be vaccinated before entering school this year. Do you agree or disagree? Well, I run the Rhode Island Public Health Institute, so I'm very much in favor of uh, mandatory vaccinations. The problem is, is that all of the, the claims that vaccines aren't effective or not grounded in any scientific evidence, vaccinating your kid is the best thing you can do for your child. At first, I probably had the same reaction as Jim Carrey, but... If I was a mother and I was sending a healthy child to school and there was a child that wasn't so healthy, I would, I think the vaccination probably is a good idea now with all these unknown diseases and things that are in the world today and we want to keep our kids healthy. I agree. I think that it's preventative. <laughs> I think um, that's a good idea to do the vac most vaccinations uh, because we need to protect the students. Um, I agree on that fact because if kids are entering and they don't have vaccinations, they're putting other kids at jeopardy. I agree. To protect the, the other kids, to protect the population at large, yes, I do agree. I agree, but I, I do have some sympathy for the parents who think it's dangerous for their children. You know, I feel... I feel for them too, so I'm kind of a little bit torn on that issue. Do you think uh, this mandate undermines parental rights that allows the parent to decide what's best for their children? I know people probably think that, but you have to think of other people's children as well as your own, and so you have to think of the safety of the community. If parents don't agree with that, then they don't have to send their children to public school. Maybe under certain circumstances? Absolutely not. If you don't want to have the vaccinations, move to another country, um, send your child, uh, homeschool them, or find some type of alternative. But I don't think you should put my child at jeopardy because you're making decisions. Although I will say that I think that we do need to take a look at what's going into the vaccinations a lot more. I just found out this week that um, they're using the remains of um, ab aborted children in some of the vaccinations. No because it's, a, it's an entirely different issue. It's a health issue, it's a public health issue. Yeah, it does, it does. But, you know, I guess they feel it's for the safety of all. No, I think when you live in a, a government, in a society, you give up some of those rights for the good of society as a whole, and that's the best way for it to work. I think it would be fittingly to say, being that we're at, a fairy festival that most Rhode Islanders are living in a political fairy tale to believe that Hillary Clinton would make a great president but they quickly forget about Benghazi and to believe that mandatory vaccines for their children are a good thing and they are safe but what about parental rights? Unbelievable wow is my choice of words Dan Bedondi, InfoWars.com <laughs>